Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be reviewing The Lucky Ones by Julian Pacheco. Now, I was sent this book free of charge as part of my position on the Young Writer Award Shadow Panel. I'm going to give it its full title here, so bear with me, hopefully I get this right. It is the Sunday Times and Peters, Frasers and Dunlop Young Writer of the Year Award in association with Warwick University. Boom, got it right. So basically I sit on a panel with four other bloggers and we get to read each of the books that are shortlisted for this year's award. We post our reviews of it and then we meet up in person and choose our winner. Then that gets revealed and then they'll reveal who actually won. So hopefully we choose the same person. This one I would say has got to be one of the contenders for it. It's actually the first book I read. And people are kind of divided about whether it's a book of short stories or whether it's a novel. So each chapter or each short story, whatever you want to call it, has got a different name. So some of the names are, for example, Lucky, Lemon Pie, M&M. There's one called Junkie Rabbit, which is about exactly what it sounds like. And what's interesting about this book is that it's kind, it almost doesn't have a plot, although it does, but it's lots of different plots all running along different lines. And it's all kind of tied together by this sort of shared kind of hallucinatory feel. Now I've compared it to uh, William Burroughs, but it's not quite as hardcore as William Burroughs. It's quite approachable. At the same time, it's not the kind of book that's going to be good for everyone. It's it's kind of difficult to, to wrap your head around it if you've ever read Train Spotting and you've kind of struggled to process the visual layout and the language and that sort of thing. Then it's kind of similar here, but for a totally different reason, and that's the fact that it is so hallucinatory and dreamlike. So the author of this book is Julianne Pacheco, I think that's how you pronounce it. She was born in Cambridge, England and then moved to Cali, Colombia. She was shortlisted for the Sunday Times EFG Short Story Award. She's been published by Soul. So she's already off to quite a promising start and what's kind of really cool about this is that you don't get a sense that this was written by a young person. You have to be able to think in a certain way to be able to write like this and I as a writer find it really challenging and it's kind of a testament to Julianne's ability that she's, she's managed to pull it off. What I really like about this is that the way that it's written, it's very beautifully written in quite a lot of places but it's also very approachable. I'm trying to find a bit of an example. Uh, yeah, here's one. And I think this just gives you quite a good feel for her, her way with words which really comes across in the book. On the ground is a solitary flip-flop, the pale ghost of her foot imprinted on the thin rubber. Nearby is a wooden stick smeared black from the grill, gnawed with teeth marks from where she scraped off every last piece of shrimp. She looks around, but the only eyes he meets are those of the rabbits, their trembling noses pushed up against the chicken wire, expressions the same as that of the young waitress moments before. So it's, it is very approachable, it's not using these big complicated words that make it hard for you to follow around but at the same time it is very descriptive and when you start to read through the whole book again you get a sense of these underlying themes so there's almost a theme of travel is kind of one, you see uh, cocaine and coca leaves prop up throughout the book as well. On top of that as well it's just really beautifully laid out, It's there's obviously a lot of work has gone into this, it's published by Faber and Faber, you can kind of tell from the cover, it's again the cover's quite hallucinatory as well, there's no way to summarise it really. There are kind of constants to it, so you go from kind of Colombia to New York, Junkie Rabbits is literally about rabbits, so you go from these human you know, people to, to the rabbits. Human people. I'm a human people. Because it's by Faber and Faber, they've obviously put a lot of attention to detail into the interior layout as well is lovely. Um, it feels great. It smells good. It's got these little flaps on the front covers. I mean, I can't really fault it really. Actually on the inside cover it does kind of, it has a blurb of sorts and this part of it in particular kind of nails the book so it says, as different characters spin in and out of focus, Pacheco builds a world uniquely her own. The result is a beautifully controlled exploration of what makes a victim and what makes a perpetrator and how lives are fatefully entwined despite deep cultural divides. Which again, you can kind of see that when you've got the rabbits coming back in, so in Junkie Rabbits, they're basically the, the animal sufferers of this human enterprise, which is the growing of the coca leaves to turn it into cocaine to, for rich people to put up their noses, basically. You see all sides of that, you kind of see the full journey of the, the cocaine from growth to production, I suppose. But it's not a cocaine book, and I don't want it that to come across. I'd call it almost literary fiction in that... It makes you think and it's supposed to make you think. This isn't a book that you can just, you can't read this five minutes at a time on public transport or something. You need to properly sink your teeth in it, pay attention just to the book and um, let it kind of wash over you, I suppose. As soon as I finished it, one of the first things that I thought was I need to go back and reread this again. And 
again and again. So let's get to the rating. So I initially gave this a 4 out of 5 rating because this was the first book out of the, uh, the, the bunch of 5 books that I'd read and I wanted space to move up and down from that. I've actually since upgraded it to a 5 out of 5 rating. I think the truth is probably somewhere in the middle so for this purposes of this video we're going to give it a 4 out of 5 but still pretty solid and I would recommend this especially if you're into books that make you change the way you think but also make you change the way you think about books, writing and literature and the way that a story can and should be told. That was a pretty good ending I think, I'm going with that. So anyway thanks a lot for watching, let me know with a comment what you thought about this, this is the first video review I've done, let me know if you want to check out the book as well, like I said if you do I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts and um, discussing the hell out of this one because where do you start? And in the meantime stay tuned and even hit subscribe if you want to be notified because I'm going to be reviewing the other four books that were in the shortlist and maybe even doing an overall wrapper at the end of that as well. So. Thanks a lot for watching. Dane out.